much longer. Uh, I'll start out with, um, I, I want to go back to the chart that uh, was quivering up there. I think we've given you a copy of that yeah. chart. Uh, did you know that that chart uh, came from the uh, web page, um, reginfo.gov? Uh, That's where we got it all. I did not, but reginfo.gov is one of my favorite web pages, and I trust it. Okay, so assuming that that information is correct, if you look at the graph again, you'll see that uh, the one graph shows the number increasing in number of regulations that have economic significance that reviewed by OIRA uh, from 2008-2009. Do you see that? Uh, I do. And uh, then you would assume that came from your website that that's accurate? I would. Okay. Then you go to the second graph and you see that during the same time, particularly in 2000, 2010 and 2009, the average duration for those reviews have gone down. Do you agree with that? Uh, that looks about right. I, I wouldn't put a lot of weight on the fact well, let me that just the, finish. So we, you agree that the information came from your website that you approve, it's accurate. Uh, you agree that the uh, first graph is correct and the second graph is correct. So I guess would going back to the first question where you disagreed, I guess you would now agree <laughs> that uh, that second chart shows spend less time in review of these regulations. Uh, and you would have to agree with the chart. I'll tell you what I'd want to see before signing off on that. The, the left-hand chart says economically significant rules reviewed by OIRA, and the right-hand chart says average duration of OIRA regulatory review. Most of the rules we review are not economically significant. So what I, I believe is the case, though I'd want to see the chart to make sure, is that in 2010, our average duration for rules in general is pretty close to the predecessor. I believe that's true, but I want to see the chart to make sure. Well, uh, uh, I'm glad you agree that the charts are accurate. Uh, I think you're parsing your words here by saying the actual wording of our titles you might no, not no, no, agree no. It's with. No, it's no, not, no, it's not semantics. It's that we, we review mostly significant rules that are not economically significant. So economically significant are just a uh, uh, well under 50% of the rules we review. So what we'd want to compare is the significant rules to the average review time or the economically okay. significant. Okay, all right. You yep. get the point. Okay, sounds like a Chicago uh, professor uh, yeah. at law. Um, I think the point we're trying to make is um, that basically that you've had more economically significant rules in the years uh, from 2008 to 2010 and at the same time uh, the actual review and the economic impact and analyzing has gone down. So that's our point we want to clearly make. And we want you to understand that uh, you might come back with a, a little bit of interpretation, but these came from your web page. Let me move on uh, to my next uh, set of questions dealing with end-of-life care rules. Uh, during your last appearance before the committee, you testified that the decision to include end-of-life care rules into Medicare regulation was inappropriate and that the American people deserve to see the content of the rules before they are finalized. That's what you said. Do you still agree with that statement? Absol absolutely. Okay. okay. But are you aware on March 3, 2011, an appearance before the Subcommittee on Health, uh, Secretary Sebelius freely admitted that she made the decision to public this regulation without notice or public comment. Were you aware of that? I was not aware of that. Okay, well that's a fact that uh, based upon what you said, uh, obviously she did not uh, comply with it. Have you ever had any discussion with Secretary Sebelius about this admission? Uh, uh, what I'd say is uh, the Secretary Sebelius was uh, very responsive to the concern that this had not been adequately ven ventilated by the public and that was promptly corrected on exactly the ground you state, and that was the Secretary's decision. Yeah. So here we have end-of-life care rules in Medicare, uh, controversial to say the least, and she agreed that she had not even sought public notice. Don't you find that is the word preposterous? Well, I, th I think what happened was that long before anything like that went into effect, the correction was made, and that's a good thing. But you agree that she was incorrect by not asking for public comment? 
Uh, well, HHS, I think what they formally said was not that they hadn't asked for public comment, uh, but that it hadn't been adequately ventilated by the public. This is a very- Ventilated, long, ventilated. Okay. Ventilated, yeah, uh, not in the sense of air, but in the sense of- uh, But don't you think those particular rules, end of life care should certainly have asked publicly for public comment and, and in a very clear manner, unambiguous, so that the American people have confidence. I mean, that seems to be so basic. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, and that's why the secretary amended the rule. Mm -hmm. Was your office ever briefed on the decision to include this regulation? Uh, we saw the regulation. We were Just not, yes or no? Uh, we were not briefed on that you, particular no, issue. No, the answer is no. Were any materials provided by HHS about this regulation to you? The regulation was presented to us. Could you please submit those for the record for us? The regulation is the same regulation that was published. So you But the materials, the question I had, were any materials provided? Independent Not materials. the regulation. We're talking about the materials I don't dealing. Any, no, I don't believe any independent materials were provided. So there's nothing that you could provide? I don't believe so. Has your office ever been contacted about the possibility of including end-of-life care rules into future regulation? No. Okay. And um, at this point, do you feel that the analysis for the end-of-life care rules has been sufficient by the administration and the comment period that it's been adequate? Well, what I understand is that, that the provision to which you object has been eliminated, and uh, I support the Secretary's decision. Um, and so we don't think it'll ever come up again, a new rule for the end-of-life care? Well, you know, we are... We are in the business of reviewing rules that come before us. I would defer to the, to the Secretary's statements. But your that. understanding is by her amending and pulling this that there is not going to be any further end of rule, well, I, end of I, life rules, I, I, or they're going to be amended? Or, or I, I would defer to her on any such issues. Okay. All right, my time's expired.